Hey, it's Jay. And today I wanna to do a quick video on smoke alarms. I've got a situation in my house and I did a ton of searching on YouTube, on the internet, and I really had a hard time finding information about how to shut off smoke alarms in my house. Uh, we had a situation where my wife changed out the battery in her smoke alarm and she went up, changed the battery out, and in the process probably dislodged a couple of wires. She put the new battery in and then screwed it back up onto the ceiling. A couple weeks later, it started to beep again. So I went up and checked. The battery was dead. It was a brand new battery that had been drained. I noticed that two of the wires were disconnected. So I went to the circuit box to turn it off, and when I got there, I looked at the entire list of all the different circuits and what they do, and there wasn't one that had smoke alarm listed. So at first I was thinking, there's gotta be a way to turn off the smoke alarm system, especially through the circuit breaker. So I started to think about it. Maybe I should try some outlets, and so I started to fool around with a few things. I used my voltage detector, and I went up and I looked and I kept checking the wires up in the ceiling and they were still alive, so I wasn't gonna touch them. So I gotta figure out a way to turn it off. Um, I went online, basically found that the smoke alarms are not on an independent circuit. They're uh, usually mixed in with outlets or other things. So I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna go through my circuit breaker box and then hopefully give you guys some tips on how to find it in your house if you're having the same issue. One thing I do know is that it's not gonna be connected to a GFI because if the GFI trips, then that would take out all the smoke alarms in the house and that's just a safety issue. So logically, I'm thinking that GFI is out of the question. Um, so I'm gonna start in all the places where there are no GFIs. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the outlets. Garage 2 plugs, that's GFI, I know that for a fact. And garage lights 1, that's GFI as well. And the front porch lights, that's GFI. So maybe I'll try living room and butler pantry first. Nope, not that one. So let's try loft, bed 2, and stairs. That's actually the area where the smoke detector is located, so maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah, the power's off up here. <sighs> but that didn't work. So the wine cooler is just a little fridge we have in our butler pantry that's plugged into one outlet. Maybe the smoke alarm will also be on that. So let me try that. <sighs> Maybe Eve plugs, I'm gonna give them a shot because there's one set outside and there's not much on that circuit. So let's give it a try. I'm getting a good workout because I have to run up and down the stairs each time I flip the breaker. Nope, not that one. I guess it couldn't have been that one because E-plugs are GFI. Let's try dining plugs and cafe plugs. Oh, not that one. Okay, this isn't going well so far. I've tried five or six circuit breakers and had no luck so far. So I just called the company that built my home and they called their electrician and since there's nothing labeled in the box, the electrician said that typically the smoke alarms are gonna be on a 15 amp circuit. So now I just have to look through the box and look for all the 15 amp circuits and then try those. And he said, generally it's gonna be attached to a bedroom. So, all right, we'll give it a shot. Okay, let's just take a close look at our circuit breaker here. See on the end of these right here, it shows us what the ampage is on that circuit. So we got 30 amps, 50 amps, 20 amps, and I'm going all the way down on this side, it's all 20. Up here it's 50, 40, 40. Then you can see 15 all the way down here. Okay, we try 32, the next one to try is 30. Let's try bedroom three and four, bath two. Nope. Next up, we're gonna try master bedroom and master bath. Please be it, please be it, please be it. <laughs> yes. Smoke detectors, SD. Okay, we made it. It took us about 10 tries to get through and finally find the right circuit breaker, but we learned a few things along the way. 
Number one, the internet wasn't really correct in saying smoke detectors are going to be located always on an outlet circuit. Uh, in this case, we had a master bath and a master bedroom circuit. Number two, we discovered that typically the smoke detectors are going to be wired into a 15 amp circuit. So you just have to look through and that can help you narrow down which circuit breaker it might be in your box. Number three, it's not going to be on a GFI because if the GFI goes down or is tripped for any reason, it might be hours, days, who knows, before you figure out that the GFI was tripped. And in the meantime, your smoke detectors might go down in your house, which is definitely a safety issue if there's a fire. Hopefully you get some use out of this short video by seeing my thought process through this problem. And if you're in a similar situation, it'll save you 30 minutes by watching a five minute video. And now let's answer the questions, what are GFIs, what do they stand for, and why do we need them? It's just science. In a normal outlet, we have a hot wire coming in and a neutral wire leaving. We also have a ground wire. If you come close to the outlet itself, you're not going to get electrocuted because the electrons, if there's any sort of leakage, will prefer to go down the ground wire rather than to your finger. When you introduce moisture and things are typically wet, then you end up having a much lower resistivity to the electricity, the electron flow, and therefore the electrons might choose to actually come into your wet finger and electrocute you. Since nobody wants to be electrocuted, if there's any area where moisture is present, you want to make sure that a GFI is located there. So you typically see them in bathrooms, in kitchens, in garages, in unfinished basements that might get a little bit wet. And those are the main places I'd say, or any outdoor plugs, like if you have eave plugs or outdoor plugs on the back or front of your house, those are all going to be on a GFI. What a GFI does is that if there's a difference in current from the hot side to the neutral side of the outlet, it detects that and within 20 to 30 milliseconds, it shuts the whole thing down and reduces the possibility of human tissue damage or electrocution in general. It's shutting down because it's assuming that electricity might be flowing into a human body. To be honest, we've all tripped GFIs before, whether it's with a hairdryer, whether it's in the garage because you plug in something that draws too much current and it trips the whole circuit. They're super annoying at times, but, but you have to be completely thankful because there are those instances where if they didn't exist, we might not be here to tell the story about it. Hands for Hire is a mobile app connecting neighbors ready to lend a hand with neighbors who need a hand. Download now in the App Store or on Google Play. Visit us at handsforhire.com. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.